Welcome to Nanopedia. Welcome. I'm Nan Jokerst, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to vacuum systems. In other videos, we've introduced the basic technologies that we use in fabrication, including thin film deposition, patterning, and etching. We've also learned about the extremely clean rooms that we use for fabrication. Now let's talk a bit more about the environment inside much of the equipment, namely the vacuum environment. While working in a clean room is typically a requirement for people performing fabrication tasks, the actual processing, for example, the thin film deposition, requires an additional level of cleanliness. Most of the processes are so sensitive to contaminants and impurities that the air molecules themselves can become embedded in the film and will adversely affect the process, the yield, and performance of our product. This concern can be addressed using vacuum systems. Vacuum systems are typically a chamber or vessel that can be sealed off from the outside environment. After the chamber is sealed, the air molecules contained within the chamber are removed with one or more vacuum pumps. We'll discuss the details of vacuum pumps in several dedicated videos. There are many different types of vacuum pumps, but all pumps serve one basic purpose, to remove air from a vacuum chamber. Let's think about a sealed chamber for a minute. The air inside is made up of different types of molecules, such as nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. These air molecules are moving and bouncing around inside the chamber, as we see here. The more molecules, the higher the air pressure in the chamber. As long as the temperature is constant, then pressure is a measure of the amount of gas molecules within the chamber. As we remove the air from the chamber, we can measure just how much air remains by measuring the pressure. Two common units of pressure used in laboratories are Tor and Pascal. A normal room has a pressure of 760 Tor or 100 kilopascal. As we remove the air from the chamber, the pressure will drop accordingly. For example, if we remove 99% of the air from a chamber, the pressure would be about 7.6 Tor. How does that high vacuum that we use for thin film deposition compare to outer space? Well, at the International Space Station, the pressure is 10 to the minus 9 Tor. In our high vacuum systems for nanofabrication, we typically use pressures of 10 to the minus 7 Tor. What's the other difference? Well, there's gravity in our vacuum systems. To establish a vacuum, first, we need a sealed chamber. This is typically a solid metal or glass enclosure. In order for the chamber to be any of, of any use, it needs to have an opening of some sort, for example, a door or port, that can be opened for putting samples in and taking samples out of the chamber. The door needs to be airtight when it's closed, or air will simply leak back into the vacuum system when we pump it out with a vacuum pump. So the door needs a seal, or we say a gasket, to make it vacuum tight. There are many types of gasket materials, but a common material is vacuum compatible rubber. Once the door is closed and the chamber is sealed, then we can use a vacuum pump to remove the air from the chamber. We'll talk about these different types of pumps in detail in later videos, but briefly, there are many types of pumps available, each with a specific property. In general, vacuum pumps fall into one of three categories positive displacement pumps, which push air out of the chamber, momentum transfer pumps, which bounce air molecules out of the chamber, and entrapment pumps, which trap or freeze, in some cases, the air molecules to remove them from the chamber. Vacuum chambers and vacuum pumps are critical tools for us to establish the necessary conditions for many of our nanofabrication processes, namely ultra clean, and air free. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe and share Nanopedia.